Hello everyone, are you ready for another adventure? It's me, Wokey, and I'm finally back to making fake Grand Order videos. I had to take a slight break because, uh, <laughs> got busy with work, so that kind of delayed a lot of videos. But thankfully, I'm back up and at them and ready to go, so... What are we going to be talking about today? Well, today, we're going to be talking about the GSSR, because the GSSR is coming up. Pretty close to anniversary. This is, I think, about the fifth time that I've tried to record this video. Uh, after last time... It did not go the way I wanted. It ended up every every year I do a GSSR video. Not every two times a year, if you don't know. These come up two times a year. And I try and keep them under an hour. And they always go over an hour. And I try and cut them down. But I also want to help as much people as I can. So we end up in situations like this. So today's video, we're going to be talking about the GSSR. I formatted it in a way that hopefully it will take less than an hour. <laughs> I even wrote down everything in a Word doc. So better for me to actually explain my points instead of going um all the time. So... That's good right into it then. So, what's the GSSR? Well, the GSSR this year is going to be coming for the anniversary. Anniversary on the NA side is going to be on the 6th because it uh, coincides with um, the actual time we... St uh, the Anime Expo panel. Uh, I think our actual anniversary is like on the 2nd or so. But we always celebrate it whenever Anime Expo time is around. So don't ex so when you see a post that says like, "Hey, happy anniversary," and then there's no events, just wait until Anime Expo. The other thing to know about GSSR is that it is paid. You are going to need uh, premium quartz. Uh, what's premium quartz? Premium quartz is pretty obviously uh, paid quartz. <laughs> If you do not have paid quartz, then congratulations, you cannot summon on this banner. If anything, you should be stepping away from this uh, and not being tempted by it. Um, the cheapest way, I've seen plenty of people say like, hey, I'm free to play except for I summon on the GSSR, which means you're not free to play, by the way. <laughs> it makes you like a minnow, I think, in the parlance of whale terms. You're like a little baby fish. I think it goes fishy, dolphin, and then actual whale, and then... There's something that exists, I think, only in Fago, which is, like, prehistoric creature, which is the thing that lives at the bottom of the ocean. Those are the dudes who have, like, an entire box full of an MP of uh, a five-star servant. But anyway, I think the cheapest way to actually get this for uh, Fago is to, like, buy two specific ones. The reason is, is that, yeah, okay, so you have to buy the $3.99 pack, $3.99 pack, which gives you four St. Quartz and a bonus one. Um... The bonus one doesn't count to uh, paid quartz, by the way. So that means you now have three paid quartz. And then buy the 11.99 one, which is 12 same quartz and five and six bonus ones. You would think like, hey, wouldn't this just cover it? It doesn't. Uh, and if you don't want to deal with any of that, then the 23.99 one, which features um, 25 same quartz plus 16 bonus, that'll get you the GSSR. But there you go. That's the cheapest way to get it if you're just trying to mid-max it all to hell. Um... And what's going to be actually featured on this uh, GSSR? Well, this year, um, it will be there will be 20 pools to choose from. Each pool is categorized by the period that the servants are released in the class. You may only roll on a single pool. Unless there's an, accident, an incident like it was in JP a long time ago where uh, there was a glitch and you could actually summon on the GSSR multiple times. And at the end of that one, they just threw their hands up and said, like, I guess if you summon on it, you get to keep those units. <laughs> if you didn't summon on it, too bad. Um, hopefully that happens on NA one time at any time. I'm always waiting for it. In terms of the five-star servants, there will be limited servants picked along among the ones on the featured image, matching the banner's classes and period. Four-star servants will be picked among the specified classes released in the period, including limited, story locked, and normal. For the most part, I won't be talking about the four-star units. Um, you could just see them as a bonus. If you're someone who's on the, like, fence about which one to pull on, then you would use the four star, but never expect to actually pull any of the ones on there. It's more of a, hey, I wouldn't mind getting that than anything else, because the chance of getting the actual four star you want is very, very limited on this one. It's already pretty hard on the GSSR. It's even harder for the four stars, except for on like one or two banners. Um, three star servants will be picked among the specific, specified classes, except for limited servants. And then three stars and extra classes banners will be picked among all classes, so there's no chance of getting... Um, <laughs> Nothing but, uh, I can't believe it, Soliari, because Soliari is the only real Avenger 3-star at the moment, um, so he would just automatically be included for all extra classes. <laughs> so anyway, yeah, that's the GSSR. In terms of how to approach the GSSR, by the way, which is, I think is another important thing, because I think people approach the GSSR in many different ways, and I think most ways are pretty valid. 
that one uh, way number one is to always go for the one that has the most op unit on it which is the ones that are like the either dps class wise or support wise typically support wise are so good that having them in your box in general will just make it better and make it easier for you to do content and stuff like that uh, the other way to go for it is that there's a unit you absolutely want on the banner and you don't care about any of the other options and then that's the one you go for. I think that's also a pretty valid way of approaching it. Uh, the reason is is that I, I've always thought that Fago is a game that you always go for the units you like and I think for the most part those two people right there are already decided on which ones they're going to get. And by the way, I didn't say it at the beginning, but feel free to tell me what, what your choices are going to be. Because I think both of those people have already made up their minds long before I ever recorded this video. They made up their minds maybe two years ago when this was originally announced. So this is really more helping for the people who don't really fully know yet. Um, who either have all the supports that they could use or have all the DPSs and they don't really have a specific unit that there's like, eh, I want that one specifically, so... Um, yeah, and those are the prerequisites, so let's go right in. I am going to be flipping around here. I'm going to start with the banner that I think is, of the 20 of them, is probably the easiest one to just say, like, outright, this is the best one on here with very little bad choices on it. So I'm going to just go right to it, uh, starting with that one. That is Berserker 1. No, I'm kidding. It's Berserker 2. <laughs> the reason is, is that this is a banner that has Arjuna Altar, Summer Musashi, and Morgan on it. Um... So let me hear, I've written down my notes about why I think all these characters are good. So let's start. Arjuna Altar, the very best there is when you absolutely positively got to kill every motherfucker in the room except no substitutions. That is what he excels at. That is what he's here for. And if that's what you want in a unit, that's what you get Arjuna Altar for. Um, he's still that way, I think, on JP, and he is that way on NA. That's the reason you want him. He's a buster AoE. He does so much. He has guts. Overall, extremely excellent unit and one of the best DPS ones. I actively don't use mine because <laughs> sometimes he makes it a little bit too easy, which is funny because I use another unit, but I guess she technically has slightly more drawbacks that make it a little bit easier. Or maybe it's just my bias, but I have been using him a lot more since he got that um, student council outfit, which I really like. Anyway, next unit on here. Morgan is an excellent support and damage dealing berserker and basically everything that Arjuna Alter is uh, if Arjuna Altar is all focused on attack and nothing else, Morgan is basically focused on a lot of the extra stuff on there. She can be used as an AoE, like, buster unit in general, but at MP level 1, she can sometimes have trouble killing the unit if she does not have the specific- if they do not have the thing she deals bonus damage to. It's something that I've run into occasionally with my Morgan, and usually I fix that by going, like, that's annoying, and then, like, using a- typically my master skill 1 to increase her attack and stuff like that, and that usually is typically enough to do it, but it is something to keep in mind if you have her MP1. I think if you have her MP2, you're probably fine. Um, but in general, she's able to, like, facilitate a lot of interesting, like, team builds. Like, I'm able to use, uh, on JP, on my side, especially for the most current thing, I'm just like, you know what, I don't even need a team of buster supports. I don't need to do the loop thing. I can just use three really good units, and then they can be supported by the fact that Morgan gives them overcharge and does all this other stuff. And isn't just a really good unit in general. I think she's fantastic. She also has a gut similar to Arjuna Alter, but the difference is that her guts gives the enemy a debuff, which lowers their attack and crit chance, which can help with survivability. And then finally, the last unit on here is Summer Musashi. And right now, on on A, she unfortunately doesn't do much, but that's just because they've released nonstop. There was like a nonstop release of art summer units. Um, after she, re when she released, she was absolutely like, oh yeah, that's the summer year, that's the Berserker unit to get with Castoria, let's go. And then on the year that they released Castoria, they also had Summer Kiara, and then you'd be like, well, okay, she's still a Berserker, she does it to all. Summer Kama, who just deals so much damage and is on the same level of Space Ishtar at the moment and here, where it becomes really hard to debate using her. And then finally, Summer Abuki, and Summer Abuki is finally what puts the final nail in the coffin, because that is a Berserker, she... Summer Buki does what the others do already and what they have and just in general is an insane unit and she takes the one thing that the one niche that Summer Musashi has, w had which was being a berserker and being able to do type effective damage to everyone so that leaves her a little bit of a weird spot on NA but that's not true on JP. On the JP um, she eventually gets a buff that lets her MP deal ba at base level 
200% damage to Saber Servants that scales with Overcharge and seals any Saber's NP. Now, important thing to kind of keep in mind, she only deals that 200% to Saber Servants, not just Saber dudes in general. So she still kind of suffers from the fact that she doesn't have an MP charge, but now she's amazing at killing Saber Servants. I think she's like on par with some of the Archer choices in the game <laughs> in terms of just killing Saber Servants. Um, so that ends up giving her finally something that she can use. I still think that of these three, obviously I think she might be the weakest on here, but she has something else going for her, which is the fact that she has a uh, American bikini on her. Um, and if that's not enough reason for you to at least give a unit a try and have fun with, then I don't know, man. We play this game for different reasons, I guess. But that's <laughs> that's his banner. The four star also are very good on this one because they're all limited, with one of them being a collab unit. So I think even in that aspect, it's aspect it's also very good. Uh, but in general, this is the banner that I'm going to be summoning on because even though I have all three of these units, honestly, I wouldn't mind having NP2 copies of every single one of these units. Uh, the only other reason I would ever use the GSSR is to get a brand new unit, and there is one other unit on here that has 100% a brand new unit on it that I would potentially go for, but for right now, I'm pretty deadlocked on this. The reason is, is that MP2 Arjun Alter just means I kill things that much better. MP2 Musashi means she just kills things that much better for when she gets her buff. And MP2 Morgan, that one thing I mentioned where it says like, yeah, that's kind of a negative on her, completely goes away when you have her at MP2. <laughs> so that's what I would also use it for. And like I said, these four star collect uh, selections is also really good that makes me want to go, you know what, good enough for me. So that is Berserker 2. We're going to move on to the next one, which is going to be Lancer 2. Lancer Tune, which features Melusane, uh, Ryoma, and Romulus Quirinus. Uh, the reason that this banner is kind of insane is because this is a 33% chance of Melusane. Uh, the way that I kind of approach a lot of GSSRs is that you have to look at this as that this is a 1 in 3 chance of getting the unit that you want, which is right here is Melusane. That means there's a 33% chance of Melusane. Tell me any other banner in the history of the game, you summon on Melusane, you will never have that good of odds of pulling Melusane than right here, right now, unless you're on specifically the last summon on Pity, in which case you're always guaranteed Melusane. That's the only other time you'll have an as good a chance of getting Melusane than on this banner. But that also still means that there is a 66% chance of failing if you do not care about one of these two units. So that's also something to kind of keep in mind. That's why I, in in my eyes, this banner ended up being um, the one for me is because every single one of these, these units, I would be happy to have. This one is a little bit weird because I would also be happy to have these, but I also don't need more copies of Melusane. I already have her NP2 and I'm happy with that. And I don't want more copies of Ryoma. And while I think Quirinus is a cool dude, I don't need more than that. But that's my own personal reasons, and you can kind of see, I think you should apply that logic as well. So if you're someone who is like, and by the way, there has to be someone out there who's just like, I don't care about any of these three units, then you shouldn't summon on this one. And the same thing can kind of be said about the Berserker one, even though I would heavily debate you on the Berserker one being full of bad units. It can be full of units you don't want, which is different. But anyway, talking about this unit, uh, the banner is the same, because like I said, 33% chance of metal same, but it's important to remember that you're more likely to get the other two units as well, which is all the things I just said here, but I already a good job writing down Wokey. You did a fantastic job. So summon with caution if you hate Ryoma and Romulus. <laughs> really be careful. Uh, in terms of Melusane, just to quickly go over her, she's the best AoE Lancer and in general one of the best units in the game on NA. A single target servant that can also transform into an AoE unit with a 100% charge on skill 3. Um, this makes her extremely effective on looping because the way that it works right here is that um, uh, having a 100% MP charger on skill 3 means you just use that and immediately go to 100% <laughs> skill. And you do lose that skill when you go into AoE mode, but she has a 30% um, chance on it. So the way you do it is use her skill 3, use the other two, pop the other two skills, double Vich on turn 2, and then on the final turn, boom this, and then Oberon. But that's again assuming that you were not. Um, oh, you can go into. Yeah, oh, yeah, you go into Oberon, and then that's how you kind of fully do a loop with uh, with her on it, with her in it. Um, and next, the other thing that's kind of good is that because of the specificness of having a 100% NP charger on her skill three, it means that you can also loop with the Black Grail. <laughs> 
<laughs> so if you're in this situation, which is thankfully I am one of the players in it, where you have a Melusane, a Vich, a Friend Vich, and an Oberon, it means have fun because you're about to go on to a insane journey as your Melusane just completely wipes the field out of everything. She kills basically everything, including Sabres. Uh, Sabres is the only thing where it's like, oh man, that's the one. If they have high enough HP, maybe. But even then, <laughs> it hasn't happened to me more. And the more copies you have of her, the better. Um, absolutely worth a 30-30% chance and a 66% chance of getting one of these twos, I feel. But anyway, let me talk about those other two units that you will likely get. Uh, Ryoma. And speaking of an AoE Lancer, Ryoma. Ryoma has a lot of solid stuff in his kit. Stuff that is good for looping, like a 50% MP charge. And stuff that is good for harder fights, like a 50% increase of defense. Built into his MP. He just kind of suffers from having his damage be on a bit on the low side, which is likely why his overcharge is a stackable 20% MP damage up at charge level 1. It's because he needs it. Um, I personally really like him, and it's only the, the damage stuff has only come up every once in a while where he just didn't do enough damage. Um, but definitely stings if you get him over Melusane. As much as I love my boy, I can tell you right now, he's not Melusane. <laughs> But as long as you're able to accept him for who he is, I think that sting will kind of go away. Um, because, I, man, I just love my dude. Anyway, next, Romulus. Another AoE Lancer unit. The Romulus is different in that they give both you and your opponent the Roman trait. This lets you use Romulus in a different kind of Roman-themed team. Use them with Bodica to deal extra damage to Roman enemies or with Constantine to buff up all your Romans. It can be kind of hard to be an AoE Buster Lancer when Melusane exists, but the best way to justify yourself is to do something completely different that Melusane can't do. That is where the value of Romulus comes from, but I'll admit that not every person is like that. Some just want to go full Unga Bunga. And that's what I basically feel about Romulus is that like I said, the unique team build is something to go for, but if you don't care about any of that, then you don't care about any of that, and I can't change your mind on it. Archer 2, that's it. That's the next one. And in terms of these little limiteds that you can look at, it's, I think, a pretty good selection. Four out of six of them are actually limited or story locked, um, and it features my boy Don Quixote on it and um, Lamba as well. But let's go on to the next one, Archer 2. I'm also in the the... These are the banners that I, again, consider really good for just pulling on. Um, Archer 2, similar to the middle scene banner, if you're summoning on this, it's because you want Super Orion with a 30% 30% chance of getting him. The other two units also aren't that bad, but it all depends on the player. With Say being the worst of the three, it really comes down to how bad will you feel pulling Say on this banner. Um, Super Orion, once Super Orion is up and running, he will kill whatever thing is in front of him. You don't know power until Super Orion is hitting higher MP damage on the first hit of his Buster card than some units do fully powered up. I don't really have any negatives about him. Anything you could say that uh, he doesn't have is there because if he did have it, he would be too overpowered. So in a way, he is an extremely powerful but in a way balanced. Like the, the the thing I imagine is like, how come he doesn't have an MP charger? It's like, because that would make him insane. <laughs> Why would you give him that? <laughs> that would be stupid to have to give him that. He doesn't need it. Build around it. A good team building, you should have at least some negatives to build around a team, but whatever, you know what? Similar to how I said with Melusane, where it's like, oh yeah, and then you use Oberon to do all that. It's a very expensive team build, because Oberon's able to give you a full 70%, and then she gives the, the final 30% um, to herself and stuff like that. There has to be at least some contention in team building while you're building a team, or otherwise, what does it matter? Uh, which is why I didn't like Merlin meta back in the day, because all you needed was just Merlin. But anyway, I'm digressing. Uh, the other two units, Summer Jean, there isn't really much to say about Summer units because I don't need to say much about the power of a Summer unit for people to want them. It's Jean in a bikini and that is enough for some. If that isn't enough for someone, then I'll say she's a really good AoE arts unit then. Very good at looping and even buffs good allies and she even has a crit damage up by 50% if next to water. So very good. Uh, Say, I really like Say. She's an AoE archer with a lot of support and can be anti-shadow servants, neutral, and man. The problem is, at least on NA, is that she sometimes misses getting exactly 50% MP for looping. Though she did get buffed on JP with a 30% MP gauge charger, similar to Summer Musashi, is a pretty long wait. Eh. But I still think she's neat. This is basically me saying is that this one guy had, was went pretty hard on me saying that I thought Sai was good. And he says, like, what? That's insane. 
And I, there's nothing I can really say to it other than I use the unit, I like the unit, and therefore I think the unit is good. <laughs> I'm not thinking deeper into the whole conversation of things. But that's how I feel on this banner. It definitely that's why I'm saying on this banner specifically, which is why it's on the third on here, is that for this one at least I can say without a shadow of a doubt, these are all good units. Um in some cases. I think some people would probably should take offense on Ryoma, but I don't think Ryoma is as bad as um the reason is that Ryoma has Castoria to kind of fall back on, so there's no worries there in terms of his loopability. It's just the damage that can be helped with. And damage can be fixed with using foes, golden foes, or even holy grails, or even more MP copies if you're a crazy whale like that. You can't necessarily fix some of the problems that Say has until that buff comes out, unfortunately. I don't think more MP copies help her. Though, if I had more MP copies, I can't be thinking like that. But anyway, it really does come down to if you're, will if you're gonna be super boned about getting Say, I would say not summoning on this. <laughs> Just because uh, a lot of people don't factor in the the mental t damage it takes when you get a unit you really don't want on GSSR. Like, you have to really factor that in. Otherwise, you're going to be miserable whenever you summon on GSSR. But next, Assassin 2. Uh, Assassin 2. Assassin 2, another 33% chance of something good. This time, it's Coin Sky of Light. If you miss her, then you get Kama or Semiramis. Kame, I think, is an absolutely amazing. I think is absolutely amazing. And Semiramis is an AoE buster assassin when there's not a lot of good AoE assassin busters out there. <laughs> Koyan Sky of Light is a buster support that can be used with Oberon, who is one of the best support units in the game. Her ability to lower cooldowns has resulted in a kind of a shift in terms of buster kits. I typically now look at buster kits to see if they can get their skills back in time to be used with her. In a pinch, she can also be used as an AoE uh, assassin unit herself. And though she offers basically zero defense, if you want a defensive ban- Though, the one negative that she has is she offers zero things in terms of defense ability. The one thing she offers is that she lowers the enemy's MP charge, which is not enough. If you want a defensive buster uh, support, then that's where Merlin comes in. But then knowing that is that you can't use him with Oberon, which is why I mentioned the Oberon thing in the beginning. Is that at the moment on NA, uh, Koenskaya is really the only- uh, buster support that can be used with uh, Oberon. There are some other ones, but in terms of getting a 50% MP from full on gauge and stuff like that, she's the only one that can be used. Um, so it's important to kind of keep a note. Next, Kama is a quick single target assassin with an 80% chance of hitting the enemy with charm. The sign of a good unit is that sometimes you forget that they can do something. For Kama, for me, <laughs> it's this third skill. Um, her third skill is a bonus against Alter Ego class servants. I've used Kama as my main go-to single target assassin since release and never once realized she did this. That's how good she is. So yeah, I think she's a fantastic single target assassin unit. I've used her basically non-stop since I've had her and so I speak from experience when I say I use her. And I really did forget about the Alter Ego thing when I was doing my research on this. And then Semiramis, there just aren't many uh, options as far as AoE assassins go. It's Semiramis, Cleo, Koenskaya, and the Free to Play Grey, I think, are the top options for assassins. She's a solid unit, has an MP charge, and can be used effectively, just not something a lot of people will end up needing. The reason is, is that if you are using an AoE buster and you have Koenskaya, why are you now training up an another AoE buster? To be used over that would the only reason you would use her is that i think she does more damage and i don't think semiramis does more damage than coin sky at the moment but to be fair i don't have uh semiramis so feel free to tell i can actually probably do hmm, i could probably actually do a little bit of research on that there is a way for me to check that but i can't check that right now because this video is already 23 minutes long and i need to keep going uh so these next one i'm going to talk about so those are all the ones where I think is just like good value in general. There's maybe like one you did on there, but in general, your chances of getting something good are higher than your chances of getting something negative. Um, for these banners, these are units that are so good that I think that the reason you go for them is for them specifically, but there's also a higher chance of failure if you do not get them in that kind of way. So, we'll go on to Caster 1. Uh, Caster 1 has both Scotty and Merlin in it. I mentioned it earlier, but Merlin is an excellent unit held back by a top support unit having a passive that says, Fuck Merlin. This makes it so you can't use the two together. I still think Merlin is a great unit to have and powerful. Uh, and powerful, though. There is a larger discussion to have if Merlin needs a buff or if that just sounds outrageous, but that is way too complicated for this video. I just think he's good and he's great. I just know that, just know he's great. 
Scotty is also really powerful, but Summer Scotty is coming up, so she ends up being in a similar boat to Merlin. Very powerful, but now a more okay in this situation. I would prefer Scotty over Summer Scotty. And the other units I think are solid. Ilya is a single target caster, which if you don't have, which if you don't have comes in handy. Summer Nero is uh, Nero in a swimsuit, and also a great Buster Looper. Da Vinci has a lot of good tools for more challenge-based fights, but NA doesn't have all her buffs just yet. So similar to some Musashi, it's another waiting game when you when you go for her. But uh, there you go. That's how I feel about this one specifically. Uh, and again, I'm trying to give as broad terms as I can with a lot of servants, so don't get mad at me if I don't do enough justice to a unit. I really have tried to get this under an hour and we're 25 minutes in, so let's go on to the next banner, <laughs> uh, which is Caster 2. Uh, Castoria, 25% chance of Castoria, spin it to win it. That's exactly what I put down here on this word doc. I have multiple videos talking about how good Castoria is. If you don't have Castoria, get Castoria. I think as far as this banner goes, you could do worse. Uh, uh, Okuni? Ok ok oh, I always forget how to pronounce her name. Izumo no Okuni, okay. Okuni is a single target caster, and like I said with Ilya, it's just nice to have a, have one of those in your back pocket. Not everyone thinks that you should have one, but I am of the mindset that you should. Um, Cause you never know when it comes in handy. Miss Crane is a great support servant that also has the ability to swap out, which is a very powerful ability. Because of how strong that is though, it means that she has a requirement to it, which is right here. Um, uh, because of how strong that is, it's locked behind 20 crit stars. So you either want to change your CEs based around that, or you have a unit that can produce 20 stars at the start, and you work around it. It's definitely one of those type of units where, if you want to use them, you have to take concessions into the team build, and stuff like that. Or think, or, or either in the CEs that you use, or the units that you use are specific. Um... Uh, Shikabu is an AoE caster who can deal a ton of damage to demonic enemies. Similar to a single target caster, I like having AoE casters as well. I also like Rata Servants in general though, so it's really up to your preference. Like I've said beforehand, there are some people who just straight up don't see the point in using AoE. Um, I think both casters and assassins because they typically do less damage. Um, and they just use Berserkers or they use one of the other ones, but I do think it's nice to have one of them because you just never know. There are occasions where it's like, man, if that just had that caster in this specific instance, it would make this fight so much easier. And for that reason alone, I think it's worth kind of building them up and using them in that kind of way. And I think she's a fantastic one of these. Um, I always see it that, uh, Sherzadi is the top one for me, but I've also heard some other people going like, let me tell you, Shikapu is also really good and probably better than her. I said, I would love to test that out if I had Shikapu. <laughs> it makes me really sad I don't have her. But anyway, enough of me being sad. This is a banner definitely where you're like, hey, Castoria, and if you don't get Castoria, you're going to be kind of bummed. But I still think that all the only reason that you're bummed is that Castoria is just no unit will ever be good enough to be like, oh, I didn't get Castoria, but at least I got this. Unless it's like one of the other support servants. Like you would need a banner that was Castoria, Kuenskaya uh, of Light, and Summer Scotty, and, and Oberon. And then you would go like, man, I didn't get Castoria, but at least I got one of them. It's an unfair level of gap. No level of servants <laughs> would be able to make you feel any less uh, good unless you absolutely love them or they were on par with her in some kind of fashion by being a support servant like her. So even though I don't think any of these units can touch them, it's n not a situation where it's impossible for them. But even if you did get them after that kind of sadness goes away, you'd go like, oh man, these are actually really good units. So I, you know what? It's not that bad. I'm happy with it. Also, Kony, I forgot to mention in, in, in my write-up, but she is like one of the very few single target quick casters in the game. <laughs> There's not that many of them. Uh, next, speaking of the man, the myth, the legend himself, Extra Six. Oberon at 17% chance on this banner. Uh, Oberon is a top support unit, similar to Castoria. I've made a lot of videos talking about how good he is. I even have a video of, uh, of him letting us, letting, I even have a video of him uh, helping us beat a challenge quest that me and my brother wouldn't have been able to if it wasn't for the crazy damage that he's able to give to a unit. And it, it's that your chance of failure on this banner, if, um, It's that the chance of failure on this banner if you're only interested in Oberon. The only neg the big negative here is that your chance of failure on this banner if you're only inter interested in Oberon is extremely high. 
um, as you can see here, he shares there's too many units on the banner to the point where you could say like, oh man, if I only cared about Oberon, this would be a great chance for it. No, you have to care about the other units on here. And similar to, it's like, and I think some of these units can definitely be that way, but similar to uh, Castoria, I think there's nothing that will ever make you unsad about the fact that you did not get Oberon unless you absolutely cared about the other unit that you got on here. Uh, so let me just quickly talk about those other units. In terms of those other units here, Doman is currently the best NA Quick Servant, except for that one guy in a comment a long time ago who hyped up Ruler Karen to me. I'll get to that later. Super Bunyan, whose only real sin was releasing at the worst time, making her overhated. For go around, go as a worst story event, fucking fight me. I was really angry about that. I'm still angry about that, apparently. Bazette has a counter that lets her do silly stuff like two turn bosses instead of three. Jacques de Molay is a quick AoE foreigner who um, looks cute. I don't get, I don't got much to say because I still, I don't have her and I never see people talk about her. I loved her in the Liz event though. And if you have anything to talk about the unit itself, feel free to tell me because still no one has told me anything about how good she is as a unit. Uh, Coin Sky of Darkness is a Buster AoE unit and can remove offensive buff, buffs and reduce Buster resistance. Also deals extra damage to earth attributed enemies and can buff off animal servants. Um, I think she looks solid, but I've heard from others that sometimes her damage just isn't enough. So definitely a unit that you have to work on to get that damage up and stuff. Okay, and that's the end for specifically those units. I talked about the ones that I think feature the units that are like, yo, this is a good ass chance to get them. The big supporters, which are Scotty, Merlin, Oberon, Castoria, um, and Vich. And now it's time to talk about the other banners that are on here that also feature units. And this is the part where we... Uh, there's 20 banners on here, so let's go. These are going to be very quick <laughs> to try and tell them. Uh, trying to say something. So, uh, banner 1. That features Proto Saber, Okita, Sigurd, Bride Nero, Musashi, Vojiki. Uh, here's what I wrote about it. I've heard Vojiki is better now on JP, but I'm not about to summon on a banner with a chance to get Sigurd on it. He's cool. He's cool as a person. Uh, unit needs buff though. Same goes for Proto Saber. Not sure if his buff did enough to make him better than... I'm not sure if Sigurd's buff was enough to make him better than Proto Saber, but it was nice. But it was nice that they gave him one. Just give both of them more buffs is my basic thing here. <laughs> is it the, 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 the fact that these two are on the banner makes it so that any of these four makes it very hard to actually go for. Next one, Saber 2. Uh, this features a Stolfo, Buki Doji, Summer Okita Altar, Charlemagne, Muramasa, the Trong Sisters, and Benny Enma. Um, there, are a lot of, there are a lot of pretty good Sabers with Muramasa being a highlight, but the odds are too out of whack. This is basically the only banner that has seven units on it. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, seven units. Um, I would only recommend it if you're just looking for a saber and you don't super care which one you get. At this point, it's just like, I just want a saber. And it's like, I don't care that it's a Stolfo. I don't care if it's a Buki. I just want one. And that's the reason you would summon on this banner. At least that's what I think. Unless you're, if you're someone who's specifically going, no, I want Muramasa, you're going to be hugely disappointed. Because <laughs> this, the odds of getting him are not very good on this one. It's still better than if you would a normal banner, but hey, it is what it is. Next banner, Archer 1. This one has uh, Summer Saber Archer, Ishtar, Gilgamesh, and Moriarty. Pretty solid 25% chance to just get a good Archer. Uh, not sure too many talk about old Moriarty, but my brother really likes him, and I like his character, so therefore I would consider him good. <laughs> Ishtar, Gilgamesh, and Saber are, are also very obviously fan favorites, and um, in terms of the four stars, it features a collab unit, which is Fujino, who is really good. Uh, and yeah, just in general, these are all really good units. Um, I'll say specifically for, I'll, I always bring up the, the story, but Summer Saber, I have NP5 because I was chasing Summer Marie. So unfortunately for me, I would never summon on this banner because I know in my heart of hearts, I would get Summer Saber and get her NP6. <laughs> Next, um, which is Lancer 1 which features Erish Goggle, Skahawk, uh, Summer Tomomo, and Brynhildr. Um, this banner is, I want at least a hot, strong girl banner. Nothing wrong with that. <laughs> Part of me still wants Summer Tomomo to complete my Summer 1 collection. That's really what this banner is. This is someone going, all four of these women, I would love to have in my box in some kind of capacity. I think every single one of them has likely been replaced by better single target. Like for these three single targets, uh, Lancers, I'm not sure which one it would be, but I know there's more 
there are better single target options, but all of them are still really good. I still use Kahawk to this day. I love her, especially with the new bunny outfit that she got. And Irish Goggle is a very good um, Buster Lancer, but similar to what I talked about in a post Melusane world, it made a lot of the old Buster Lancer units where it's like, well, all I do is do damage. And unfortunately, if that's all you really do, it's not enough to kind of compete. And to be fair, she does have some other stuff on her. I think she eventually gets a strength in as well, which that actually helps a whole bunch. So let me take that back. Until I can actually play with her with the strengthening, I take back what I said about that. I have to be more careful when I, I didn't realize that she got buffed on JP. So for the time being, taking that back and saying really good unit, but um, she has a buff that you have to wait for it to full, see, fully see some stuff. Anyway, next, Rider 1. I think this is the only one of the 33% banners I did not talk about previously, and you can see why once I start talking about it. Uh, Summer Saber Altar, Ivan the Terrible, and the Skandar. The best unit on here in terms of being a unit is Ivan, with the other two I personally feel need help. It might be because I love both of them and there is a bias there, but I'll leave that up to you to decide if you agree with me. Uh, also, Ivan the Terrible has the same voice as Kiryu Cosma, and that's pretty cool. So this is really a, do you want a 33% chance of getting Kiryu Cosma? Then there you go. Unless you care, and I know for a fact that Skandar and um, Summer Saber Altar are extremely popular, but I just don't think that you, <laughs> basically the people who have already decided to summon on this banner for one of these two have already made that decision and are aware of the, of the kind of faults that they have and are waiting for them to get like improved in some kind of way i would love it i would i love both of these units i would want them to do it back in the day i used them a whole bunch and it was easier to kind of use a unit with a little bit of a negative like tinge to them nowadays it's a, it's really hard with how things are especially if iskandar had the benefit of having a lot of damage and merlin wasn't the best at looping so you didn't really care about that that's not the case in buster anymore so things change sad said next writer 2 which features bakken constantine reigns da vinci rider uh actually this is the other banner that i'm heavily debating summoning on uh besides the berserker one because i'm missing all four writers and i like them bakken i don't know and i don't have enough experience with her but she's got a lot of doggos and i think that's cool constantine i have learned a lot of people th thought that he was the worst you did in the game he always seemed pretty cool to me, but hey, I guess I was wrong on that. Uh, the buff he got in JP was really good though, and that makes him much better. It makes him a much better unit, to the point where it's like, well, now I don't have to feel so bad about that video anymore. <laughs> Reigns is a fantastic support, and I debated putting her with the other support talks um, with, with when I was talking about the other must-get um, supporter units. Uh, would love to have her and is very useful overall. Uh, Ryder Da Vinci is fantastic looper and can support the team. I was able to beat bosses in JP with her underleveled and Castoria because the enemy just couldn't deal damage to us. Overcharge on an arts unit with the same team as Castoria results in some uh, huge defense. Yeah, I think on JP I was able to get constant updates of like five of the um, uh, purge defense things up at all times. <laughs> it was very funny. It's like, yeah, yeah, I think this is another banner. I'm still gonna debate a little bit. I still think Berserker wins out on this one because of the four-star servants. I like the four-star servants on here, but I have um, two of them already. And the other one, it's a different case where I'm missing, I, it's three versus one uh, kind of type of dealio. Next, uh, Assassin 1. Assassin 1, which features Cleo, Shuten, Doji, Mysterious Heroin X, and King Asan. I think the only real dud unit on here is Cleo, but recently while talking in a video saying I think Cleo needs buffs, someone very passionately defended her, saying I needed to give her a second chance because she can be really good for a unit her age. I still need to do that myself, but I will bring this up anytime I talk about Cleo until I try out again because my personal experience with my Cleo just left me sad that she hasn't gotten a buff yet. Uh, and in terms of the other, Shuten, Mysterious Arrow X, and King of Song are just really good units. <laughs> With Shuten being an AoE arts unit, Mr. Heroin X being an anti-saber, single-target assassin quick unit, and King Asan being a gorilla monkey, buster damage, I kill you now. Um, yeah, Cleo, it's really sad. I always think that she needs a buff of some kind because I love her unit, I love her design, I love her look, but there's just something about her that's missing. But when I said that previously, someone very passionately said, like, listen, I understand that you feel that way when you use her the first time, but I think if you give her the proper support, she can really shine out and do stuff. 
And I think by the end, when I was talking to them, kind of hearing their mindset about it, um, they still felt that it would be nice if she got a buff because she definitely does need one. It's just that I was, um, I was making her seem much worse than they thought that she was. So I will always bring that up until I have, <laughs> I have not had the time to actually put that into a test, but I still want to say it because that is someone else's experience that I did not have. And I feel like it's good to bring up other experiences people have with the units. And very rarely do people actually bring those up to me. And I like talking about them. I forgot about this one for Caster 2. By the way, Caster 2 also has three limited servants um, uh, with two collabs in it. This is a very good deal. I love all three of these. Just to mention it really go <laughs> really quick. All right, next one. Uh, Berserker 1. Let's go. Berserker 1. Kintoki, Mysterious Heroine X Alter, Hijikata, and Raiko. Kintoki is a strong boy. Mysterious Heroine X is a strong girl. Hijikata wants to die, and Mama Raiko is damn. And in terms of her unit, um, I'm waiting for her buffs to come to NA, please. So yeah, Kintoki, there's not really much to say. Kintoki is an extremely high damage dealing berserker. Mysterious Heroine X Alter is also an extremely a uh, good damage dealing berserker, just not on the same level of Kintoki, um, but she does it to, I believe, saber units and good units. Uh, let me double check on here. Yeah, good alignment, 50%, and then the bonus to saber class servants, um, which makes it so that she's very good at killing sabers, especially if they're the good alignment. Hijikata, I've also heard people say can deal a lot of damage, but I don't like his design personally, but again, a lot of people tell me that uh, maybe it's another case which is like, I need to find the right team for him. <laughs> and he just needs to prove himself to me in the right scenario and stuff like that. Similar to what I've had with like Yang and uh, Kagekiyo in the past. And Raiko is going to be a fantastic uh, looping unit the second this ability comes to NA. Give me her MP charge, please. Give it to me now. I would love that. This also did buffer a little bit, I think. No, it didn't. Yep. Yes, it was three turns instead of one turn. Makes her much better. But anyway, that's Berserker 1. That's definitely a, do you like any of these dudes, go for them type of banner deal. And here's the part where I remember the last time I was recording this. This is the death row, I'll say. <laughs> All the extra class servants. Extra one, Amakasu, Sherlock Holmes, Dantes, Jolter. Uh, we just had our last Sherlock banner, and unless NA does an exclusive banner, it's looking to stay that way for a long, <laughs> for a long time. Jolter is also eventually going to get a really cool animation update, which makes me feel like uh, it would be good to get her now. She also does get a buff as well with that. Uh, Dantes, I think, is a really good quick AOE uh, servant, and I've heard Amakasu is good and never heard anyone fight me on that. Feel free to if you wish. As far as I'm aware of, Omakasu is still as good as I've been saying, but I also don't have him and no one's ever fought me <laughs> whenever I said he was good. So yeah, that's that. Oh, that's extra one. Extra two, Summer, Saber Ruler, Shi Huang Di, Space Ishtar, Demon King Nobu, and Summer BB. God, I had so much to say about this one. I think the only really dud, the, the only real dud here is Summer Saber Ruler. The other four have various uses slash fun things to play with while still being just an overall good unit. I think Saber Ruler has a fun mechanic, but she's held back by her damage. I was only able to fix that by getting her NP2 and giving her mana loading to fix that her NP gauge only gives 40% instead of 50%. Shi Huang Di has a very, is very hard to kill. Spacious Star is currently one of the best arts loopers, but is about to lose that top spot to Summer Ibuki. It's usually been a debate between her and um, Summer Kama and Summer Kiara, and then that debate just is killed the second Summer Ibuki comes up. Uh, Nobu has had so many buffs, I can only assume she's finally good. Summer BB is a fun unit that just needs help in terms of damage, and once you get her get her that bit of extra damage she's really good but if you're planning to go heavy for archetype earth just keep in mind both are buster moon cancer units and yeah the the thing i'm talking about in, the in terms of mechanics is that she does have a really strong skill it lets you um royal card lets you kind of shuffle the deck and then make it so that one person's card doesn't get involved in it which i do think is a really fun mechanic to mess around with and it then also increases in, uh, party's mp generation rate the problem is, is that a lot of her other skills like, she has a 40% NP charger for some reason on a 30% delay one time only <laughs> buff, which kind of sucks. Um, this ability is okay, but it's not, like, amazing. The absorption only lasts for a single turn, but increasing your own attack by 40% is nice, but it just doesn't fully go on here. And, yeah, this, um, maybe it will change a little bit when, uh... 
Yeah, I think she just needs a little bit more. I really do love this unit, and I make it work. I think it's a unit that if you love, you can find a way to make it work. But again, if you're not in that mindset, you're just going to see it and be like, man, that's a bummer. I would have loved one of these units that are good regardless of anything else. <laughs> and I say that including uh, Demon King Nobu, who has just had so many buffs and literally got her brother added to the game. And her brother dies for her and to make her more powerful. I refuse to believe that this unit is not at the very least better <laughs> than... A rule, summer ruler. Next banner, extra three. Karen, Young Moriarty, Himiko, Summer Kama, Summer Kiara, and Kagekiyo are on this banner. Karen is a really good AoE quick unit, the best if you believe that one guy in my comments. Young Moriarty is a really good AoE arts unit who is anti-good and can give the enemy the evil alignment with a big negative uh, being that he uses a lot of charm materials. Something all charm servants also suffer from, by the way. <laughs> Himiko is a great buster support that I love using in challenge quests and someone with Merlin and someone without as someone without Merlin. Summer Kama and Summer Kiara are both excellent arts AoE units, but both Summer Ibuki but um but Summer Ibuki is coming and Kagekyo is just very hard to kill. She has a lot of guts to her and she gets a powerful bite based on that guts. But she can also be a little bit of a greedy unit, meaning that um I think some people have told me in the past, like, hey, you can just stick her in the back, but I feel like Ku is better in th at that, and she's better uh, probably up front. Mm, maybe it, it needs more experimenting, I guess, on my part. But I definitely have tried both, and I think I liked the damage she did better when everyone was fully supported on her versus just being at the back to be like, hey, in case things go bad, go for it, because it's very expensive when Ku is so very inexpensive. But anyway... Someone actually once very went hard to bat because I asked, is Karen good? And then they said, yes, Karen's amazing. She's the best quick uh, person on NA. And I said, better than Doman? And he went on a full on like, yes, Karen does so much damage. She does all this. She does that better than Doman. Whether or not you believe that guy, I believe that he believes that Karen is the best one. I still think Doman probably wins out in terms of what he can do. But I had to at least make that aside to tell you what I've heard from other people. Young Moriarty, I've been... The Trom thing is a real bummer, <laughs> but I am able to still loop with him at skills at level 6, um, thanks to, I think, the maximum broken black, black rail that I have to help deal a lot of damage, because he is a ruler, and sometimes rulers can suffer from not doing enough damage. Uh, Himiko is a fantastic unit. Similar to Oberon, I have plenty of videos where she was, like, the MVP of the team, helping with the Buster... Uh, helping support Buster teams and being very hard to kill because she's a ruler. And helping with a lot of buster damage and stuff like that. I love Summer Common. I love Summer Kiara. Um, in terms of similar to the thing I applied to Summer Jean, you don't need an excuse for, for Kama in a swimsuit and Kiara in a swimsuit to be a unit to be good. But if you care about good units, just know that Summer Ibuki is also in a swimsuit and is better than both of them and is coming up very soon. But not everyone has 300 tickets like me and ready to summon her day one. Uh, and I already said everything I need to say about Kagekyo. Next one. Oh my god, we're so close. Can I do this before the hour comes up? Uh, extra four. Okita Alter, Kiara, Melt, Abby, Hokusai. Uh, Kiara Hokus and Hokusai are good AoE arts units. Castoria makes it so you have to be... You need to be really bad to not be usable with her. So it results in a lot of those like, AoE arts units being at base level. Yeah, good, because you can be used with her. Um, I like Melt, but I think it's weird her, uh, for her single target hit to only remove after it deals damage. Um, I think Okita Alter is a weird unit, but we are about to get Mighty Chain, and so I'm holding off on saying any more. Abby can still be powerful against Berserker enemies, but her usability has gone down a bit as they add more foreigners that can also do what she does, but are stronger. Um... And like I said beforehand, she can suffer, sometimes suffer from not dealing enough damage and stuff like that. And these are the units here. Also, it should also be mentioned that I believe this version of Kiara has a bonus against rulers. and can fight them and stuff like that. Um, yeah, I really am interested to see in Mighty Chain. Someone most recently said, like, hey, you talk really bad about a lot of units that have, like, um, half and half, which is what Okita Alter has. And it says, but you're forgetting about Mighty Chain. I said, yeah, you're right, I am forgetting about Mighty Chain because I play NA and it's not in the game yet. So I'm holding off on anything else to say about Okita, but I can still say Okita Alter is a very cute looking unit and it's Okita Alter. And sometimes that's enough for some people. Melt, I really do like as a unit, but the fact that her NP deals damage first and then removes buffs is really annoying when you're fighting someone with invincibility on them. <laughs> 
just needs to buff that out, I think. I think it's finally time. I think it's okay now. We can buff him out to make it so that she can deal, she can remove defensive buffs and then hit them with the damage. It does make her an easier boss fight, I'll say. Um, because you know for a fact that after you get hit by that NP, you're still surviving it. And yeah, this is Spanner. Next one, extra five. Let's go. King Protea, Summer Abbey, Van Gogh, Voyager, and Yang. Van Gogh is a good. She Van Gogh is good. Is so good. She is the reason some foreigners don't get existence outside of the domain. The power of 100% crit damage on her arts NP goes hard. Uh, King Protea, I've heard, is pretty niche, but if you love her, you find a way to use her. Summer Abbey is a bit bad on NA right now because she lacks damage. On JP, she does actually get damage up uh, from her from a skill update, but I'm sure I'm sure if that's enough to push her up to saying she's a good unit. Voyager is a good quick boy who was released at the time the quick meta was dying, so I don't have a lot of experience with him yet. I'll know more soon when Summer Scotty comes out into the game, and I can hopefully use him with her. Yang is fantastic at staying alive and fighting a berserker. She's also a taunt and built-in invincibility that's very useful. Since I've been uh, since I've leveled up her skills to max, she's basically been an auto include for me when fighting against berserker bosses. And. Yeah, I think that basically sums up everything I can say about these. I really wish I had Van Gogh. Oh, man, I love Van Gogh. I would love to have a mess with Van Gogh and do a lot of silly crit stuff, but unfortunately I can't right now. Uh, I have to look into a banner where she's going to be out later and see if I can get her there. And that is it. I have here as a final note, and that is it. Please be under one hour, and we just barely made it at 51 minutes. And that's the end of the video, everyone. <laughs> Like I said, there are 20 banners. There's a lot of units. I had to be very like vague and mentioning a lot of them. Some other ones I didn't even really mention a whole bunch of like all all of these units. I just had to say like, yo, they good. <laughs> if you need more explanation, I guess all stuff, feel free to ask me. But for the most part, I had to kind of keep it this way low. Otherwise, this video would be over an hour long and it would be too 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 much to say. But yeah. That's the GSSR. I wish you guys the best of luck. Hopefully you get the who on your way. Your your. Hopefully you get the man. When I don't have notes in front of me, suddenly I lose the ability to speak. Hopefully, you get the unit that you want. Um, whether it be one of the strong ones, whether you're going, you're risking it all for the 33 percent Melu saying summer um, summer Orion. That would go crazy. Super Orion or Coin Skya or maybe you're going. You know what? Fuck it. I'm, we ball. I'm going for Oberon stuff like that. Or you're picking it safe and going, you know what, I would love an Arjuna Altar, um, Summer Musashi, or Morgan in my party right here. Easy pick. Easy pick. Whatever you end up picking, whether it be before due to power or due to you love them, I wish you the best of luck. Thank you very much for watching up until the end. Uh, if you have the chance, by the way, you can leave a like and comment down below and <laughs> subscribe to the channel. It does help out a whole bunch, and usually you're supposed to say that at the beginning, but I waited till the end because there's just so much to talk about that I couldn't waste it so much. I already have to do like a preamble that is like 10 minutes long to say like, this is what the GSSR is, and it's already very long. But anyway, that's the end of the video, everyone. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one, and hopefully soon more videos will be coming up. <laughs> Until next time, peace out.